The central principle of Xi Jinping is that there must be a united, tightly controlled China. And he uses his rationale for the things he does based on that. I point out to him, no American president can be sustained as a president if he doesn't reflect the values of the United States. And so the idea, I'm not going to speak out against what he's doing in Hong Kong, what he's doing with the Uyghurs in western mountains of, of uh, China and Taiwan trying to end the one China policy by making it forceful. I, I said, and by the way, he said he, he gets it. Culturally, there are different norms at each country, and they, their leaders are expected to follow. Now, a group of senior UK lawyers on an unofficial tribunal investigating China's treatment of the Uyghur minority group has concluded that Beijing is committing genocide and crimes against humanity. The tribunal details systematic human rights abuses, including forced labor, torture, and religious destruction against the Uyghurs in Xinjiang province. <laughs> Materials in to go ahead and make uh, other shit with, you know. I noticed you had the. Can, can I get that on there? The you got the Stalin tattoo right there. Yeah. 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 Nineteen seventh of the revolution. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. He's the greatest Nazi do? killer of all time, bro. Like <laughs> right. I mean, the talking about the wicked ones on, in the Jewish community that run America, run the government, run the world. Really? I didn't call him the greatest of all time because of his rhetoric. I called him the greatest of all time because of what he's done in black communities. I don't agree with many of Minister Farrakhan's statements. That's, Specifically that's, about Jewish people. As I said, I don't agree with many of Minister Farrakhan's statements. Do you uh, condemn them? I don't agree with these statements. At the end of the day... You won't condemn the, it. No, no, no. To be very clear, it's not my language. It's not the way that I speak. It is not how I organize. I should never be judged through the lens of a man. The satanic Jews That's a rough start. that control everything and mostly everybody, if they are your enemy, then you must, must be somebody. I didn't call him the greatest of all time because of his rhetoric. I called him the greatest of all time because of what he's done in black communities. Give you an idea as to just how how ingrained he was. DNC Chair Keith Ellison, two other members of the Black uh, co the, the Congressional Black Caucus, attended private dinner with Farrakhan. You have Tamika Mallory, the co-president of the Women's March, attended some of the anti-Semitic speeches. Democratic congressmen, they had regular meetings with him. Uh, Jews were responsible for all of this filth and degenerate behavior that Hollywood is putting out. <laughs> That's not exactly just a meet and greet. <laughs> yeah. That's, those are pen pals. Here the Jews. That's out of context. Here's one. Don't like Farrakhan, so they call me Hitler. Well, that's a good name. Hitler was a very great man. He's Donald Trump's worst nightmare. Michael <laughs> Avenatti. Joining us once again is Michael Avenatti. Let's bring in Michael Avenatti. Michael Avenatti. Michael Avenatti. Michael Avenatti, thank you very much. He's out there saving the <laughs> Look, country. It, it, Don Meacham says he may be the savior of the republic. You are something of a folk hero now. I owe Michael Avenatti an apology. I've been saying enough already, Michael. I've seen you everywhere. What do you have left to say? I was wrong, brother. You have a lot to say. I uh, am just dying to hear what you think. These people all like you. I'm the only person right here Donald Trump fears more than Robert Miller. We think you guys are the tip of the spear that's going to take down Donald Trump. Right. Michael Avenatti's a beast. Okay, that's true. And he, he's a beast. He's a beast. I hand it to yeah. her and I hand it to Michael Avenatti. But he has a great, bigger calling here. That being a lawyer is minimal compared to what he's doing. No one has talked tougher directly to Donald Trump on TV than Michael Avenatti. And Donald Trump is afraid to mention his name. That's fascinating. Donald Trump is terrified of Michael Avenatti. He gives Trump a run for his money more than anybody <laughs> else, Michael Avenatti. An existential threat to the Trump presidency. The Democrats could learn something for you. You are attorney Michael Avenatti has been convicted of fraud for stealing nearly $300,000 from former client Stormy Daniels. Avenatti shot to fame representing Daniels, who claimed to have had a sexual encounter with Donald Trump. He helped negotiate a deal for her, but the jury found he redirected her advance money to himself. Daniels was the key witness against him. Avenatti has already been sentenced to prison for trying to extort millions from Nike and still faces a trial in Los Angeles on charges he ripped off other clients. And here's what I'm asking of you, if you can, if you can find the time 
go to justiceforjuliusjones.com where you can sign the petition to commute Julius's sentence. Chris Jordan, the guy that's trying to pin the murder on, did not match the DNA profile on the bandana. Julius Jones did in fact match the DNA profile on the bandana that was described by Toby that they found the murder weapon wrapped in in his bedroom. <laughs> Way back in, what was it, 1961, they invaded Cuba. And everybody was totally convinced that Castro was the worst guy in the world. That all the Cuban people were going to yes, rise up yeah. in rebellion against Fidel Castro. Right. They forgot that he educated their kids, gave them health care, totally transformed the Killed society. Ah. You know, it's funny, sometimes American journalists talk about how bad a country is because people are lining up for food. That's a good thing. In other countries, what? people don't line up for food. But the rich there's a get difference. the food and the poor starved. When Fidel Castro died, Trudeau gave him basically a really nice eulogy, despite the fact that Castro is an authoritarian dictator that has forced Cubans to literally float on rafts to get to America to escape from communism. Folks, Castro regime jailed and tortured political prisoners at a higher rate than Stalin's regime during the Great Terror. They murdered, murdered, mostly by firing squad, more political prisoners in their first three years in power than Hitler's regime murdered in his first six. Would you trade Trump for Maduro? Yeah, one of, I mean, I think Trump, um, I think Maduro was democratically elected. Probably, yeah, sure. More than likely, yes, of course. <laughs> if there's a Nicolas Maduro out here who's going to bring us uh, to revolution, I will support that movement. He is one of the most important forces we've had on this planet. From my very American point oh. of view, of my friend, President Chavez, it is only possible to be so inspiring as he is. And the yeah. whole revolution there oh, where he was sitting, it's just like, oh my gosh, let's, let's be reverent to a man who said before the UN that they would execute without trial. And by the way, hated black people, thought they were lazy and deserving of death. Chavez spoke up for people and people around the world recognized that if they were marginalized, poor and dispossessed and trying to get their fair share of the cake, then Chavez was somebody that was on their side. There's a shooting of a Trump supporter recently. Awesome. Um, <laughs> I don't think I've heard of another Trump supporter being shot. So the f what? He got shot. Is he alive? Uh, I believe he died. Oh. Tough luck. Don't be a f Trump supporter in Portland. The Women's March again praising one of the FBI's most wanted domestic terrorists in an act of resistance against President Trump. The group wishing Asata Shakur a happy birthday in a tweet calling her a, quote, revolutionary, along with the caption, a woman's place is in the struggle. Now, Shakur was formerly known as Joanne Chesimar. She's a fugitive in Cuba after she escaped from prison for the murder of a police officer. Yes, uh, Roman Polanski. <clears throat> I'm very sorry that he's in jail. Now, it might seem like that's bad, considering that he anally raped a 13-year-old girl on Quaaludes. Might so I admire Margaret Sanger enormously. Her courage, her tenacity, her vision. Well, there's no question that Margaret left behind a conflicting legacy. It's also true that she was a champion of progress. In her own words, Sanger pushed for a society that limited births to those she deemed fit to have children. Well, I think the greatest sin in the world is bringing children into the world that have disease from their parents that have no chance in the world to be a human being, practically. Delinquents, prisoners, all sorts of things just mock when they're born. In 1916, Sanger opened the country's first birth control clinic. As a member of the American Eugenics Society, she advocated improving the genetic composition of humans through controlled reproduction of different races and classes. She often wrote about the issue in the journal she founded, called the Birth Control Review. In 1919, writing, I personally believe in the sterilization of the feeble-minded, the insane, and the syphilitic. The most urgent problem today is how to limit and discourage the over-fertility of the mentally and physically defective. It means the release and cultivation of the better racial elements in our society and the gradual suppression, elimination, and eventual extirpation of defective stocks, 
those human weeds which threaten the blooming of the finest flowers of American civilization. Sanger once shared her vision for a preferred race at a women's branch of the Ku Klux Klan, writing in her autobiography, Always, to me, any aroused group was a good group. Quintez Brown is behind bars on $100,000 cash bond, charged with attempted murder and four counts of wanton endangerment. And accused of shooting at mayoral candidate Craig Greenberg in Butchertown on Monday, charged with attempted murder now. The Louisville Community Bail Fund got the money together with the help of Black Lives Matter. We just need to follow the law as they instructed us to do and not put our emotions um, into this. But one of the jurors charged with deciding the fate of accused murderer Deontay Rizilla says that's exactly what happened in the jury room. Three jurors were unwilling to convict Rizillas based on his race. They said, um, I don't want to send a young black male to jail for the rest of their life or have them get the death sentence. Rosillas could face either of those most severe penalties if he's convicted of killing Jill Sue. Prosecutors say Rosillas broke into the 59-year-old's Davy home intending to commit burglary, but when he found her inside, tied her up and stabbed her two dozen times. His DNA found on a knife and inside the home. They are now writing letters to terrorists. Aww. Being taught to respect <laughs> terrorists is a new teaching aid. So they, a new teaching aid that recommends school children as young as seven write a letter to a terrorist to help understand their motives. The book in question is uh, called Talking About Terrorism, Responding to Children's Questions. Now it tells primary age children that terrorists kill people because they believe that they are mistreated uh, or unfairly or not shown respect. So they want this book actually gives examples of terrorists whose ideas then turn out to be right. So they, a quote is actually the suffragettes use violence and were called terrorists in this curriculum, because that's the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> so they're comparing them to suffragettes, encouraging kids to write letters to terrorists in the UK, all in the name of multiculturalism and progress. What could possibly go wrong there? When I say abolish, you say ice. Abolish. Ice! On the 13th of July, an individual by the name of Willem van Spronsen attacked an ice facility in Washington state. Throwing what sounds like Molotov cocktails at buildings and propane tanks in an attempt to, well, destroy some property and perhaps kill some people. And he ended up being shot. There was quite a disturbing trend of open support and endorsement for Willem van Spronsen and what he was trying to do, usually under the hashtags Willem van Spronsen and Martyr. When I say abolish, you say ice. Abolish? Ice! They're strictly principled anti-fascists. What we saw were some brave people risking their lives. That group protests fascism. Maybe their tactics weren't exactly right. It's messy. Antifa are people who go and they try to push back on these guys, but it is not the case that they are going around building an armed movement. Fascism cannot be defeated through speech. You need to take it with the utmost seriousness before it's too late. Black Lives Matter, the Antifa movement is interested in preserving the fabric of America. Antifa is one of those things that somebody came up with as a catchphrase so that you could say, you know, oh, there is violence on the other side. As we can see in this tweet from Andy, I am nervous about tomorrow's Portland Antifa rally. They're promising physical confrontation and have singled me out to be assaulted. And, and in this post, we can actually see them promoting physical confrontation. We realize there are many valid reasons why people cannot engage in physical confrontation. There are plenty of other ways to help. Be a medic. Stand together with others to create a shield that people can duck behind. Create a distraction. Cop watch. Use your imagination. There are any number of creative things that can be done to help. But we all must work together. To defeat the rising tide of fascism in the U.S., it is important that leftists of all stripes stand in solidarity. Go, go! Get out of here! Get out of here! 
I just got beat up by the crowd, no police at all, um, in the middle of the street and they stole my GoPro and they punched me several times in my face and my head, I'm bleeding. Um, Now we actually have video of some of these Antifa people who are filling up cups with these milkshakes. Now I don't know if these milkshakes are actual milkshakes or if they are the quick dry cement ones that the police were referring to earlier, but we can see in this clip they're actually filling up Antifa branded logo cups with these, these milkshakes. Now, let's go around here so you can see this nice memorial again, because they always create these shrines to known criminals, not like a David Dorn who we've talked about. You know, people who are out there committing violent felonies to petty criminality. And people won't even know about Garrett Foster. Most Americans, know, if they hear the story of Garrett Foster, they go, oh yeah, okay, you aimed an AK-47 at a guy in a car, you got shot. That's you swarm a car and you aim an AK-47 at somebody in that car. If you don't believe that a human being in a car with an AK-47 aimed point-blank range, can defend himself with his firearm, you don't believe that people have the right to defend themselves. Kyle Rittenhouse defenders say, well, you know, he was hit with a skateboard after he shot someone else in the head. So he had every right to kill the guy who was trying to uh, apprehend him or stop him from killing anyone else. Self-defense, self-defense, right? Um, well, in this case, apparently there was definitely a knife. Uh, and so that's much worse than a skateboard. So definitely self-defense. So all right-wingers agree, right? Self-defense, because you just said it about Rittenhouse. And in this case, it appears to be a, a, a more significant case of self-defense. So you're all on Reinhold's side, right? Oh, you're not, that's so weird. The hypocrisy is there. We've been pointing it out every single day. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't point it out every single day, um, but I'm personally done feeling angry at the hypocrisy because they know that they're being hypocritical. They're intentionally being hypocritical. They're intentionally applying a double standard and they're just not interested in fairness. They're not interested in equality. These are people who aren't interested in the facts. And so once you kind of accept that they're not honest actors, that they engage in these conversations and these debates with bad faith, well then I, it's not that the anger goes away, but it's just this understanding of why even bother reasoning with these people. And one of the reasons why I know for a fact that they're nowhere near comparable and that Rhino was not in a self-defense scenario is because there's actually surveillance video of Rhino stalking the victim prior to the attack. The idea that he just happened to find himself in this situation where Danielson had a knife and he was gonna stab him and his friend of color is completely and patently absurd. There was no knife. The Reinhold stalked his victim and then targeted him based on his political views. We apologize, um, you know, you know, we love China, we love, you know, playing here. But what, what was the reasoning? What, what's the reason? So, I so understand you're doing your job, sir. Totally. Just Captain One Arena. We understand we respect your, your freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. um, we are just personally not having, we don't have any stance on it. And so we're just asking uh, no one is any signage related to that being in here tonight. And so, uh, and under what was the uh, it's So the I just science, explained it. And that's what it is. Under the sign standard okay. or? There's a level of, of uh, admiration I actually have for China um, because their you know, basic dictatorship is allowing them uh, to actually turn their economy around on a dime.
Like, can you believe this scumbag is our president? He is literally Hitler. I mean, literally. can you believe people voted for him? Racist. Harvey, can you take it two feet over? You're blocking the TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, it's, it's the Christian right taking the high ground and then voting for this guy. It's just... Did you see his tweets? The, I know. Their, hypo their hypocrisy knows no bounds. This is possible because of Harvey. Uh, he is a wonderful human being, a <laughs> good friend. The President, thank you for being my guest tonight. And as I said, I always learn amazing things from you. He and I have been sure he does. friends for a very, very long time. He's amazingly talented, but he's also amazingly charitable. Harvey, I'm proud to know you.